Have you ever heard of the Kilgore Manufacturing Company of Homestead, Pennsylvania? Well, if not, that's not really surprising, even though at one time Kilgore Manufacturing was the world's largest producer of toy cap pistols and the caps they used. We'll learn more about this company and the connection between Kilgore and the BSA through a very particular item in the collection of the National Scouting Museum in this edition of Artifact of the Week. Joseph D. Kilgore set up the operations of Kilgore Manufacturing in 1912 in Homestead, Pennsylvania, where the company produced cast iron toy cap pistols and the caps for them. In 1919, Kilgore moved from Homestead to Westerville, Ohio, where they initially employed about 30 people. While in Westerville, their company grew to over 175 employees and added sales offices in New York City and Chicago. In 1921, the cap factory in Westerville burnt down, but it was rebuilt. Then again in 1923, due to the hazardous nature of working with gunpowder, the cap factory once again was destroyed by fire. This time, not only did they rebuild, but they also expanded the operation by 25%. By the 1930s, Kilgore was making 25,000 cast iron pistols and 100,000 rolls of caps each day. Kilgore's toy guns were shipped overseas with its largest foreign markets being in the South American countries of Brazil and Argentina. During this time, they also branched out into a variety of cast iron toys, including pieces of dollhouse furniture that sold for a nickel, and Kilgore also began producing cast iron banks in a variety of shapes that had movable parts that were activated when a penny was inserted into the bank. In addition to toys, Kilgore expanded its product line in 1929 with the establishment of the International Flare Signal Division in Tippecanoe City, Ohio. During World War II, Kilgore became very active in the manufacturing of flares, munitions, and other pyrotechnic devices, including fireworks. The slogan for much of their new product line was, Lighting Your Way to Safety. It was not uncommon for the company to receive letters from people thanking the company for saving their lives with these products. During the 1930s, Kilgore also pioneered the use of Bakelite and early plastic to make toys including a variety of squirt guns including cowboy, futuristic space and pocket sized designs. Their plastic lines also included housewares, where it was very common to find a family picnic basket full of brightly colored plates, bowls and glasses produced by Kilgore. Following World War II, Kilgore entered into a very strange exchange involving the purchase of the Thompson submachine gun from its original manufacturer, McGuire Industries. Now in 1945, the Tommy gun, which had been around for more than 25 years, was packed away in crates by McGuire Industries and lay dormant in a warehouse just taking up space. Now, Kilgore really had no interest in the Tommy gun per se, but in 1949, they believed they found a market for the submachine gun in Egypt. So they approached McGuire and paid $385,000 for the rights to manufacture the Tommy gun. The deal would give Kilgore all of the guns and all of the spare parts that McGuire had in storage. McGuire, in need of cash, agreed to the sale, and Kilgore now owned the gun that made the 20s roar. The Kilgore deal with the Egyptians, well, it never materialized, and Kilgore later sold off the Tommy gun without ever opening the crates. In 1961, Kilgore moved from Ohio to Tennessee, where it continued to produce plastic toys and housewares, as well as munitions and flares for the military. While Kilgore never did manufacture the real Tommy gun, they did create a toy version of the gun for sale to children beginning in 1973. It was part of the Special Agent playset, which sold until 1979, when a similar toy Tommy gun became part of the Tactical Assault Command Squad playset. This last appeared in the 1980 Kilgore toy catalog. Eventually, Kilgore was bought and sold a few times and the name of the company changed with each transition. Today, Kilgore Flares is owned by a British company and is best known for the manufacturing of pyrotechnic countermeasures used by military aircraft. In the collection of the National Scouting Museum, we have one of the first products patented and manufactured by Kilgore Manufacturing, the Boy Scout machine gun. The Boy Scout machine gun was patented on October 21st, 1913 as a toy cannon with US patent number 1,076,125 assigned to this invention. 
This particular Boy Scout machine gun was produced by Kilgore between 1913 and 1919 when the manufacturing facilities were moved to Ohio. The Boy Scout machine gun is made of cast iron and has wooden wheels. When it was first sold, the cannon came with 10 wooden balls that would fire out of the barrel using this mechanical lever to release the firing mechanism and load the next round into the chamber. As you can see, this toy cannon still functions. To demonstrate its firing, I'm using a piece of wooden dowel that was cut down to about three quarters of an inch in length. As you can see here, this lightweight projectile traveled about six feet before it hit the ground and came to rest almost 15 feet away near the bookcases in the next room. While there's no evidence that this toy cannon, despite its name, was ever officially licensed or sold by the BSA, and there's no advertising for any Kilgore toys in Boy's Life or Scouting Magazine that I could find, it is possible the toy was advertised and sold to Scouts by Kilgore through their distribution network. Well, that's all the time we have for this week. Join us next time as we continue to learn more about the history of the BSA through the collection of the National Scouting Museum and Artifact of the Week.